Hey, do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Or do you have an already existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Well, check out WeKnowPodcasting.com. From concept development to theme music to editing to logos, WeKnowPodcasting.com is a one-stop shop for all things pod. Don't hesitate to hit us up. We're very nice. Hello, and welcome to the End in Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin, the owner of Meraki Media Management. The End in Mind is a place where we come to share stories, tips, and strategies of many entrepreneurs, creatives, business owners, and just some people that aren't willing to live the traditional lifestyle. We talk about how to live outside of the box today and how to incorporate what really is important in your life to keep that end goal always in mind. Again, if you would like to reach out to me in any type of way, you can find me on Instagram at Meraki underscore media underscore management. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Thanks so much and enjoy our show. What is up, party people? Welcome back to the End of Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin. Super excited to be here with you guys today, especially because today we are talking about one of my favorite topics because I'm trying to normalize talking about business anxiety. I struggle with business anxiety frequently. For example, yesterday I had crazy business anxiety all day and sometimes I can't even put a name to it. It just comes on. So I want to talk about what this looks like and how it can start to manifest in your team. It can start to manifest in your content and it can even start to manifest like to your clients if you don't start to become aware of the anxiety and the emotion that you're feeling. As a young business owner, this was something that took me a lot of trial and error to start to analyze in myself. It was not a pretty, you know, conversation that I had to have with myself either. It was maybe I need to find some support with this and I absolutely did. It was also I needed to learn different coping mechanisms. So today I'm going to talk about again the team entry to it all because really I believe that your team can feel this anxiety so much so that it can totally corrupt the entire business and it may even trickle down onto your team members. So I'm going to share a really personal story with you guys today. When I was in college and I was working for another internship, I felt so riddled with anxiety working in this profession with this person on this team I actually had to end up leaving the team in a very um, not so great manner. It's not something I'm proud of. I did not handle it in a way that I wish that I had. And looking back now, that experience has actually helped me understand how I'm making my team members feel. That's why I'm so in tune to it. And during the pandemic, a lot of these unhealthy behaviors I saw coming out in myself and definitely trickling down to my team. And I hated how I was feeling during the process because I was somewhat aware of it. And I hated that I could possibly be causing them more anxiety instead of showing up as a leader and being able to guide them in a direction that would hopefully eliminate that anxiety and also you know help them see that that's not a state of being that we need to live in as business owners because if you guys haven't listened to our previous episode with Nicole she was talking a lot about how business anxiety and these different conversations can start to come out like even when you're feeling emotional and you're breaking up with a client right or you're onboarding a new client and maybe they say something and it's like wow that was totally a trigger for me but how can I start to bring it back in and understand like 
why that affected me in such a way. So during the pandemic um, and throughout these experiences in my life, I have definitely seen myself show up in not the best of ways. So with this certain experience, I was working for someone that was starting a business and their lifestyle was very chaotic because they didn't have, you know, a foundation and they weren't getting steady leads, you know, and that in return trickled off into their team. So when you would meet with them, it would feel very heavy and it was very masculine energy, which I do not always do the best with. So I'm a very empathetic person, sometimes very sensitive. I pick up on certain energies in the room. So me and my style, of management is really in tune with my team like if they're having a bad day I take on their duties and I tell them that they should tell me when they need support because at any and all times I can do that for them like I try to let them know that as long as we there's a reciprocation right in the relationship I am there to support them and that's what my duty is as a manager and as a business owner and at this last position when I I left in a very chaotic way, I did not feel supported. And I also, there were a lot of different issues um, with that position that I knew I did not want to step into full time, which was where the conversation was headed. And that did not feel good for me. So what I want to talk about when you're working with people in these environments and you're picking up on some of this energy, because most of my listeners tend to be empaths or they tend to feel energy really heavily, right? That's what I mean when I say empath. So As we feel that, it can sometimes like affect us even more than it may be affecting the person because we can take on that energy so much and like feel it so heavily that it can start to even affect your own life. So as I've been more aware, I saw myself fall into these negative habits in the pandemic that was exactly what this past person was doing to me when they were managing me, which was, you know texting them all hours of the day, like checking in to make sure that they were getting their work done. And it simply came out of me not having enough things to fill my time. So I was fixating on the numbers. I was fixating on the leads. I was fixating on, you know, the potential that the world was going to end, right? Like there was a lot of different anxieties that were coming up and they were trickling off into my team. Like I remember looking at this timestamp on my phone. It was like six o'clock in the morning and I'm frantically emailing, texting one of my team members. And I realized that they had just texted me back at like six o'clock the night before and I wasn't even reaching out about anything that was important or needed to get done I was simply sending a message to ease my own anxiety to like tell myself in my head like oh well you followed up with them already but that it wasn't for a productive follow-up it was just literally to ease the anxiety so the more I became aware of it the more I realized that I was falling into this unfortunate Unfortunately, really unhealthy managerial role and I could feel those team members starting to pull away and I really didn't want that they were they are so amazing a lot of them are still with me shout out to all of you guys thanks for sticking with me and my crazy lifestyle when you are starting a business and there aren't isn't money coming in it's easy to point the finger which is what I saw a lot of the people do in my past and that's just not the person I want to be you know as a business owner it is my responsibility to create a brand that is trustworthy to develop different types of funnels for my business I'm not going to point the finger at my team and blame them for you know not getting me business like to me that was just such approach that did feel very masculine um a lot of different you know trainings out there which I'm sure you guys see all the time have this type of approach like if you push 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 the sale that's the only way you're gonna be successful in life and I'm gonna tell you right now 
I don't know who came up with these strategies, but I think anyone that is approaching business like that is not someone that I would like to be in business with. The way I approach business is, hey, this is what I do. This is my specialty. This is what I'm really good at. If you're interested, I'm happy to send you my packages. There's zero pressure at all. When and if you're ready to work together, fantastic. If not, we will recommend somebody that will be able to help you with any and all of your needs. So really being a business owner came down to being a resource for me, for my clients, for my team, for my family, for my love life. Like being a resource is so much more valuable than being this buy from me now, than even being this like millionaire, right? Like what is the goal? (laughs) I just want to help people. That's my goal. And what would really upset me is a lot of these people will take these types of approaches to to business like oh my goal is to help as many people as possible but then they're like if you don't buy today then I don't meet my quota well sorry that's not really my fault maybe I'm not ready to invest in your business maybe I'm not prepared even to invest in your business and now you're making me feel like crap because I can't afford your product or service and you're not going to meet your goal and this is somehow my fault right there's a lot of blaming and judgment going on and until I got into therapy I didn't really realize the stark difference between you know some human beings and like this school of thought literally Um, It just comes down to how you look at life. And if you want to live an abundant mindset, if you want to live an abundant life, this is going to be so cheesy, but I literally think of that song by Justin Bieber. (laughs) It's called Habitual. (laughs) And he's talking about his love with Haley. Bieber and he's explaining how thankful how grateful they are to be together like literally that's all that he cares about is just being together he's so grateful for it they never get ungrateful right they always bask in that gratefulness and that's an abundant mindset like there's a reason why these people are really successful because they believe and they know that they are thought leaders that are going to continue to grow and develop their brand regardless of what anyone else thinks like they know that they're going to get there so understanding this approach to life has changed me forever and also understanding that there's a lot of people out there that don't approach life like this. When I have my rose-colored glasses on, you know, if you guys go back and like look at me when I first started this business, I honestly thought that most people were going to have the same outlook as me. Like especially when I first started getting into this manifestation, I'm like, okay, this is just like how society is going to head. Like this is just, this is way people are gonna start to be. And to some extent with 2020, I do believe that, you know, like there's something there. Like people have shifted. They're, they want to follow their intuition, all of these things, right? They, they want that. But there still is a large majority of people that live in this scarcity mindset. Um, and if you're currently there, it's okay. Like there's no judgment here with it. I just welcome you to think about some of the things I'm saying and maybe start to think about gravitating more people in your life, consuming more content like this, um, understanding artists that are promoting a lifestyle like this, that know how to put it into words, that know how to explain this type of lifestyle, because you're not always going to be in the abundant mindset. And that's why creating a community that you have to back you when you're having that crap day, when you're feeling like, you know, nothing matters and it's really hard you know it's really really hard guys and definitely Sean and I struggle with this still like there's moments when bills come in and you're like oh my god really like what's that car accident from right like what's this next thing coming in the mail and you just want to sit there and you want to be pissed and there's a certain extent that you should right let yourself feel that emotion don't suppress it but then realize at least what I realized for myself, which I hope and know all of you can start to realize in yourself is like, okay, I can afford this bill. 
how fortunate am I to be able to afford this and really not think second twice about it. You know, yeah, it sucks that it's coming out of my account, but like I can afford it. And that's amazing, right? Like that I can say that. There's so many people on this planet that aren't able to say that. And the more that you can start to slowly shift out of this negative into the positive, it will start to come into your life much more easily. So when we started looking at these bills as, you know, we're so fortunate to be able to pay them, like later on today, I'm going to pay our mortgage. It's like, wow, how abundant is that, that I get to go pay our mortgage and that mortgage is now adding to our overall value as human beings, right? Like that is adding to our overall wealth that will go into our account eventually right when you think about wealth and starting to understand money like this too like money is seriously just an energy so the more energetic positivity you have naturally the more money the more energy will flow to you easily like I um, recently was working with one of my clients we were talking about chakras and this was so interesting she said you know chakras can't really get blocked and that's what I want you guys to think about yourselves like you're not getting blocked you know like there's not some resource that like it's not like your blood flow is like literally being blocked right like you always have energy running through you you always have blood pumping through your body like think of it as that yeah there may be spots of your body which maybe don't get the amount of blood that you're hoping for Or there might be parts of your, you know, life that might not get the amount of money that you're hoping for. But how can you start to draw that energy in, change that mindset, think differently about your body, think differently about money so that that doesn't have to be quote unquote blocked because it was never really blocked to begin with? How can you make that more easily able to flow, right? So Getting back to this idea of how I have impacted my team and understanding that trickle down effect, that's exactly what energy is, right? So if I start to block my team, right, like quote unquote block my team by filling up their, you know, texts all day in the pandemic and taking away their hours that they actually should be working with me on a call to explain, you know, how many sales we were supposed to get during the pandemic that didn't come through. Is that really going to get me into that abundant mindset? Hell no. That's going to block me even more. Instead, I should be spending that time building my credibility, reaching out in the DMs, talking with clients, understanding why they may be left, right? Was it the pandemic? Was it because they don't have enough money flow? How can you pivot, right? And the more you start to think of it as a game and get less emotion for it, which really comes to falling back on your positive mindset and understanding manifestation, it creates this sense of trust with the universe so the more you build this type of mindset you start to know okay well I always have that to fall back on like no matter what happens to me like for some reason I always think of I think it was Nelson Mandela and he was incarcerated for a certain amount of years unfortunately it's a terrible story but he talks about I mean it's honestly kind of miraculous because out of the story He was still such an abundant, amazing man that was able to change a society forever, regardless of how long he was incarcerated for. And he literally talks about how positive he was able to stay during that time because he would like say there were other people in the world that were going through worse things than him. And I think that there's a sense of positivity that he knew you know like at some point he would get out and he would be able to change so many people's lives and sitting with that abundant positive mindset is something that I'm sure that he worked on for a very long time prior to being incarcerated and it's something that he fell back on during a really deep dark moment in his life similarly I've worked with clients that 
they're fantastic. They've gone through really hard times, you know, maybe during the recession, maybe they had an event business, you know, that didn't do as well as they had hoped for. And they talk about how they fall back on their positive mindset. Like, if the bills aren't getting paid, right? Like if you can't make that payment, how can you start to realize, okay, well, I'm so thankful that I was able to eat yesterday, right? Like it comes down to the small necessities and the like basic needs of life and being thankful for those moments. So if you guys don't follow me on Instagram yet, I definitely recommend it. I'm at Meraki, M-E-R-A-K-I underscore media underscore management. And I will frequently post like when I see angel numbers. This is one of the ways that I snap back into my abundant mindset all throughout the day. So anytime I see three repeating numbers, I stop what I'm doing and I write down three things that I'm thankful for in that moment, that day, whatever. A lot of the times, this is crazy, but a lot of the times it's I'm thankful for air in my lungs, like something that is so simple that everyone has, but I am so thankful for that. Like I'm so thankful to have life breathed in me, right? That I can move forward every day and potentially make an impact on people's lives. I am so grateful for that. A lot of the times it will be, you know, I'm thankful for food in my stomach. Like it doesn't even have to be something big, right? It can literally be the small needs that we all have. And stepping into being so thankful for those will continue to help you be thankful for any and everything that comes into your life. It's like, oh, next time you're walking down the street and you see a penny, wow, that's great. I'm totally going to pick that up or I'm going to flip it over to heads and make sure that the next person that finds it gets some good luck, right? Like all of these different types of mindsets will affect everything in your life. It will have an impact on your relationships, whether that's good or bad, right? Because there's some people that can't and don't want to lean into this mindset. I'm starting to realize that my mindset is a lot for a lot of people to handle, which is why I'm so thankful for all of you listening, all of you that, you know, encourage this podcast and find value in it. Like, this is big school, like a big, big pill to swallow, you know, at times. Like, a lot of people don't talk about situations like this. And it's starting to feed into my personal life, you know, like this is what I want to talk about. This is what I'm passionate about. Luckily, my boyfriend has been able to, you know, come on board with a lot of those conversations. We're doing a lot of internal work together. You know, there's some people that just don't want to be around that. They don't understand it. And that's okay. It's not something that they want to call into their lives. But what's important to me is surrounding myself with people that want to have somewhat of the same outlook or want to support one another, right? Because it really just comes down to understanding abundance and understanding that any and all people that walk this earth have the right to abundance. And that's why we should only encourage people to follow their dreams, to be successful, to take that next step instead of coming from a place of judgment or coming from a place of not understanding, it will impact so many more people than you probably even know. And it has such a greater trickle down effect than me sitting behind my phone, micromanaging my team and putting anxiety out to the world, right? So that's really what The End in Mind is all about. If you are just finding our podcast now and you enjoyed this show, please do me a solid. uh, Give us an Apple Podcast review. We are still running our giveaway. So if you leave us an Apple Podcast review, enter your Instagram handle in there and you will be entered into a pool to win a free Starbucks and or mom and pop coffee shop of your choice in your local town. We would love to support your local businesses any way that we can so if you love this show please leave us a review it will seriously help me reach more people that feel the same way that want to work on you know understanding a different lifestyle and possibly changing their own so I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you next time 
Thank you so much for listening to The End in Mind. I would like to remind you all, if you haven't yet reached out to me on Instagram, we are at Meraki underscore media underscore management. It will be in our show notes as well. If you would like to reach out to me, we always offer free coaching through Instagram based around our Instagram training and our business Instagram practices. If you need any type of support, please do not hesitate to reach out to me there. And we also offer several different types of consulting and training packages if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth tips. So thank you all for listening in. And of course, I want you all to keep the end in mind as you continue with your day and or work week. Have a great week and I will see you all next time.